For many rivers, pressure on water resources is rising because of growing cities, irrigation development, hydropower production and other uses. Effective management of these scarce water resources is critical to achieve food security, promote socioeconomic development and to protect important environmental value. It requires accurate information on the quantity and quality of the available river flow. But stream flow is a difficult parameter to measure. We therefore measure water levels, which is much easier, and then convert these levels to stream flow using a rating curve. The rating curve is the relation between water level and river flow at the control section. The key assumption is that water level is a reliable indicator of flow area and that water level is a reliable indicator of flow velocity. These two parameters, flow velocity and flow area, make up discharge. Field measurements of stream flow are needed to develop the rating curve, but we rarely have enough field data. Many hydro stations are in remote areas that are difficult to reach, specifically in the rainy season. High flow data are therefore scarce, and the high flow segment of the rating curve is often not defined. In addition, rivers are not stable. Erosion or sedimentation change the channel, and therefore change the rating curve. Many water agencies do not have the resources in terms of travel budgets, boats, people and equipment for adequate field data collection. Consequently, on occasion, there are multi-year periods without any field data at all. Thus, many rating curves are poor. They are based on too few data points, while the quality of some of these measurements is even questionable. For these rivers, we do not know stream flow with any degree of certainty. It leads to incorrect or overly conservative water resources decisions, and scarce and finite water resources are not used in the best possible way. So is there another way to get this rating curve? Indeed, there is. Normally, we have much more information about the river. We know the channel width, channel slope, bed material, channel complexity. We know the flow conditions and the cross-sectional profile. We know when the river spills into the floodplain. Combining this information with the available discharge data leads to a much more accurate and defensible rating curve. The method is called the hydraulic approach. How does it work? We start with an equation called the standard rating equation. It's based on Manning, Chessy and Bernoulli and follows the concepts of uniform and steady flow. We then estimate the parameters of this equation by observing channel characteristics. This is the key advantage of the methodology. By observing the river hydraulics, we can approximate the shape of the rating curve before doing a single measurement. For instance, the scale factor A is a function of slope, channel roughness, channel complexity and channel width. The offset indicates the point of zero hat and can be calculated with the cross section. Exponent B is a function of the flow conditions. Exponent C relates flow area to water level and can also be calculated with the cross section. So, by measuring the relevant river properties, we approximate the coefficients of the standard rating equation. And, crucially, this rating model represents the specific hydraulic conditions of the river. The model is then calibrated with a limited set of high quality measurements. It is more accurate, more reliable, and more robust than statistical curve fitting, which is the technique most commonly used to develop a rating curve. Moreover, the hydraulic approach is defensible and requires much less data, which is important because field measurements are expensive. 
there are additional benefits. For instance, sedimentation or erosion are normal in most rivers, and we know that channel conditions will probably change. But now that the rating model represents the river hydraulics, we can adjust the curve to reflect the changes in channel conditions. In this example, sedimentation has changed the cross section, but slope, bed material, and sinuosity have remained the same. Thus, the scale factor A is stable. Offset has changed, but we can calculate the offset with the observed cross section. Since flow conditions have remained stable, there's no change in exponent B, and we use the new cross section to calculate exponent C. Thus, only two variables have changed, and we can easily calibrate the curve with a few high quality flow measurements with a high degree of certainty. Using the same setup, we can often infer a rating curve for periods without discharge measurements. It leads to a plausible and defensible curve. Clearly, not with 100% accuracy, but far better than no data at all. Improving the quality of the rating curve is often the most effective step to improve the quality of river flow data. This applies to current data and to historic data. For many hydro stations, this can be achieved by applying the hydraulic approach. Improving the rating curve often represents a relatively small investment that leads to much better data, and it's worth considering to use the best possible data before embarking on important projects such as large-scale infrastructure development or complex modeling. <laughs>